Good morning all, I am Dr. Chis, Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology, Anu Dental College and Hospital. Today's session is on TMJ imaging. These are the contents, introduction and radiographic anatomy, indications, imaging modalities, plain radiographs, panoramic radiograph, tomography, arthrography, advanced modalities like CT, CBCT, ultrasonography, MRI, nuclear medicine, SPECT and PET. Why TMJ is so unique? It's a joint with both hinge and sliding movements. These are the two separate joints anatomically function together as a single unit. Its articular surface is covered with a vascular fibrous connective tissue. Point of closure of TMJ's jaw bones carrying teeth, rigid end point of closure. It's a complex joint with an articular disc in the digitate between the bones. This is the radiographic anatomy. You can see the mandibular condyle. There is temporal bone with articular eminence and mandibular fossa and you can see the disc over here with retrodiscal tissues. Why do we need TMJ imaging? We have to get idea about the specific anatomic areas of TMJs like mandibular condyle, glenoid fossa, articular eminence, soft tissue components of TMJs like articular disc and its attachment and also regarding the joint cavity. Other goals involves evaluate the integrity of the structures when disease is suspected, to determine the extent of the disease, to monitor its progression when disease is present, and to evaluate the effects of the treatment. What are the indications of TMJ imaging? When we need to assess the progressive pathology of TMJ, when there is a recent injury, when there is a sensory or motor abnormality, when there is severe restriction in mandibular motion, when there is acute alterations of the occlusion, degenerative changes of bone can be assessed and also in the case of disc displacement. What are the imaging methods? That is plain film radiography, tomography, panoramic radiography, arthrography, arthroscopy, computerized tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, single photon emission computer tomography and also radioisotope scanning. So before imaging, clear indications should be established to justify a test, a thorough history has to be taken and an appropriate clinical examination is needed. The symptoms and signs presented should guide to develop a differential diagnosis of possible TMJ pathology. Based on the differential diagnosis, the most appropriate mode of imaging should then be ordered. So what are the other factors determining the mode of imaging? There is the likelihood of hard or soft tissue pathology, availability of specialized equipment, cost of examination, amount of radiation exposure, and contraindications such as allergy to intravenous contrast agents or pregnancy. So what is plain film radiography? Plain films are those films when the x-ray is made with a stationary x-ray source and film. Plain films are the least expensive mode and it requires simple equipment that is often available in the dental office. What are its disadvantages? It depicts only mineralized parts of the joint such as bone. It do not give any information about non-mineralized cartilage, soft tissues or the presence of joint effusion. Radiographic changes are often not seen until a sufficient volume of destruction or alteration in bone mineral content has occurred. There is superimposition can occur with the adjacent structures which causes a visualization of the joint in a difficult way. What are the plain film techniques available? There is transcranial view, transpharyngeal view, transmaxillary view, reverse towns projection, submental vertex view, posterior, anterior and lateral cephalogram. Regarding transcranial view, it was introduced by Schuller in 1905. It's otherwise known as post auricular method or Lindblom technique which is the most reliable among the three other transcranial view techniques. The X-ray beam is directed parallel to the long axis of the condyle. You can see here, the X-ray beam is directed parallel to the long axis of the condyle. And also, you can see the image of the mandibular condyle, which is in open and also in the closed position. Regarding transmaxillary technique, 
It's otherwise known as transorbital or Zimmer technique. In the transmaxillary view technique, the X-ray beam is directed perpendicular to the long axis of the condyle. Changing the vertical and horizontal orientation helps with the condyle and mastoid process superimposition. The lower jaw is also protruded to avoid superimposition of the condyle onto the base of the skull. This is the transmaxillary technique. This view, along with the transcranial view, provides a three-dimensional evaluation of the condyle for fractures and also severe degenerative diseases can be identified along with hemoplasm. Regarding the transpharyngeal technique, it is otherwise known as Parma technique, McQueen Dell technique, or infracranial technique. This view involves placing the X-ray tube close to the contralateral joint and aiming the beam towards the opposite joint, which is adjacent to the film. As a result, the joint nearer the film is in focus, whereas the joint closest to the X-ray source appears out of the focus. It provides an acceptable view of the TMG, also the condylar neck, ramus, as well as zygomatic root. This is the transpharyngeal technique. Here you can see the mandibular condyle and it is also known as infracranial, macuntels and palmar technique. Coming to the submental vertex view, it directs the X-ray beam through the chin region parallel to the posterior border of the ramus towards the base of the skull. It is useful supplement to examine the condylar displacement and rotation in the horizontal plane associated with the trauma or facial asymmetry. Because the patient is positioned with full neck extension, it is contraindicated in trauma patients. This is the submental vertex view. Reverse Downs Projection It positions the patient's forehead directly against the film. The X-ray beam is then positioned behind the patient's occiput at a 30 degree angle to the horizontal and centered on the condyle. This projection offers an excellent view of the condylar neck and is very useful in the trauma setting when a condylar fracture is suspected. Reverse Downs projection is this. Coming to the cephalograms, there are two types, posterior anterior and lateral cephalograms, but it gives little information about the TMJ itself because of the superimposition of the adjacent bony structures. However, they can be used for the series of examination in patients who is having facial asymmetry. Coming to tomography, tomography is a radiographic technique that clearly depicts a specific slice or section of the patient. In conventional tomography, X-ray source and film simultaneously move around a fixed rotation point in opposite directions. Objects lying within a specific plane of interest are seen in focus, whereas those structures outside the predetermined focal plane appear to be blurred. This is the frontal tomogram. This is a lateral tomogram. Coming to panoramic radiography, this imaging technique is one of the most commonly used. And the fundamental principle behind panoramic radiography is based on the tomographic concept of imaging a section of the body while blurring the images outside the desired plane. Panoramic radiography is a useful screening technique for condylar abnormalities such as erosion, sclerosis, osteophyte formation, resorption and fractures. It gives information about the teeth, mandible and maxilla which may help with the overall diagnosis by ruling out odontogenic sources or other pathology of the jaws. What are the disadvantages of panoramic radiography? The glenoid fossa and the articular remnants are not well visualized because of the superimposition of the base of the skull and zygomatic arches. Condylar position also cannot be evaluated because the mouth is slightly open and protruded during this view. This is a panoramic radiography and this is a panoramic TMG program where you can see right and left TMG in open and closed mouth position. Coming to advanced technique like CT, application of conventional CT in imaging the TMG has been most significant in the evaluation of heart tissue or bony changes of the joint. Pathologic changes such as osteophytes, condylar erosion, fractures, ankylosis, dislocation, and growth abnormalities can be well visualized with the CT. You can see axial and coronal CT over here. Coming to the soft tissue imaging of TMG. 
soft tissues of the joint can be imaged with magnetic resonance imaging or arthrography. It is indicated when TMJ pain and dysfunction are present or when the clinical findings suggest disc displacement along with the symptoms that are unresponsive to conservative therapy. The choice of technique depends on patient factors such as allergy to contrastation, claustrophobia, as well as cost and availability in the objectives of the imaging technique. MRI uses a powerful magnet, radio waves, and computer analysis to produce excellent soft tissue images. MRI allows the construction of images in the sagittal and coronal planes without repositioning the patient. T1 weighted or proton weighted images best demonstrate osseous and discal tissues, whereas T2 weighted images demonstrate inflammation and joint infusion. Medial disc displacement are best detected using MRI. MRI is used to analyze dynamic assessment of condylar translation, disc movement during opening and closing, disc morphology, joint effusion, synovitis, osseous erosion, as well as degenerative joint disease. Coming to arthrography, it's a radiopaque contrast dye technique which is injected into the lower TMG spaces under fluoroscopic guidance to image the soft tissue structures. Katzberg introduced this technique for TMG imaging in 1979. Arthrography was the first dynamic study of the joint. According to the pattern by which contrast agent flows, adhesions, disc perforations and disc functions can be studied during open and closing movements. This technique is very much ideal for small disc perforations and for visualizing the movements of the joint. The disadvantages include it's an invasive procedure, it requires insertion of needles into the TMJ space and it needs a skilled operator and it can result in various complications such as bleeding and introduction of in infection. It's potential for an allergic reaction towards contrast agent and there is high radiation exposure. Coming to ultrasonography, ultrasonography uses sound waves of high frequency to produce images of the body. Most favorable results have been noted in relation to evaluate this position with minimal benefit in evaluating heart tissue changes. Position of contact in osteotomy procedure can be analyzed in ultrasonography. This is the ultrasonography of a right temporomandibular joint. Coming to the nuclear medicine, nuclear medicine is so unique in that it can assess the changes in physiologic function as a direct result of biochemical alterations at the cellular and subcellular level. Therefore, used as a physiologic adjunct to the anatomic detail provided by other imaging modalities. In imaging of PMJ, the most commonly used radio tracer is technician diphosphonate. Assessment of local blood flow, vascular permeability, and somatic action, and the amount of mineralized bone crystals in miniature collagen that bind phosphate can be realized. Coming to the conclusion, multiple imaging modalities are available for evaluation of TMG. The need for TMG imaging should be assessed on an individual basis depending on the signs and symptoms obtained and the working diagnosis. Thank you so much.